Welcome to the making of a DM. One question to change your future. That's what we're going to talk about on today's show and so much more. So with that said, let's get started. I'm more Kevin Hey there, it's your boy Mark Evans, DM. If I sound a little giddy today, it's because I am. I'm hanging out in the Treehouse office here in Kirtland, Ohio, overlooking a 200-foot ravine to my left and right and back, and it's uh, absolutely amazing. You can see it on social media. I posted about the Treehouse and all, but if you guys are new here, thank you so much to the making of the DM. It's been a crazy last 14 days, to say the least, and I still got another home stretch of 10 days left. But uh, I kind of want to share some stuff with you guys about I just had my birthday on June 19th on Father's Day. So to your fathers, happy Father's Day. Hope you had an absolute epic day and uh, I'll share some cool stuff that happened here. But um, I want to talk to you about a lot of things in business and life today. It's going to really, th- I, I, I believe... We're all dealing with this stuff, so I just want to talk about some real stuff, as we always do here on The Making of a DM. Before I get started, thank you guys so much for the uh, five-star reviews over on iTunes or whatever platform you utilize. Um, We've had a surge of book sales, a surge of downloads. Um, Recently, I was speaking at Lions Not Sheep with my boy Sean Whalen out in Utah, and uh, thank you guys for everyone that supported that. It was absolutely epic. It was a really cool moment, a really, really cool moment. And uh, like I said, I shared that last week, but it's it's pretty neat to see all the amazing people out there building a life that they want and getting their house in order, as Sean always says. So um, let's dive into it. Um, today's going to be a kind of a random show. I got some notes here to talk to you about, but, you know, we all have something to accomplish. And what I mean by that is I sit here and I'm sharing my life pretty visibly on social media. I only share probably a, a, a smidget of what's really going on over here, but I do have a lot of cool stuff going on. I have a lot of crazy shit going on too, so don't get it twisted. But if I was a spectator, uh, consumption mode, I would think that everyone has everything and I'm, I'm out there like bouncing around a hundred different places. And what I'm talking about today is really focus. And I want you to do something today, take an exercise and uh, grab a piece of paper sometime. And, you know, when you got 20, 30 minutes and really ask yourself, what do I want? Right. What do you want? It's not what does Mark want or what does Mark have? Because right, we all might want the big houses, the big cars, the jets and all this cool shit. But do you really want it? There's a difference between wanting it and really wanting it. What I'm trying to do is relieve a lot of stress off of people that are trying to be something or someone that they don't really want to be. It's interesting. I was walking. I've been working out, walking with a 40-pound vest here in my neighborhood. This is a neighborhood where there's not a house under a million dollars. And by the way, a million dollars in Ohio is a lot of money. A million dollars in Florida, not so much. But The house there is where we're at minimum, minimum entry is a million dollars. These are all, you know, these are estate style housing and, you know, some of them go up to, you know, 20, 30 million. But as I'm walking around and I'm not saying this to be douchey, I'm just sharing real life stuff. Had my headset on, I'm listening to an audio book and I've got this vest and I'm walking up a pretty big hill and I'm looking left and right and forward and up and just like. You ever have those gratitude moments where you're like, holy shit. And then I start thinking, this is a true story. (laughs) I was like, what the hell do these people do for a living? How can they afford these houses? This is tax. I mean, you're paying, you know, five to six grand a month just in taxes. And then you got lawn care, you got flowers, you got, you know, pool maintenance. I mean, you got everything, right? 
I mean, literally, just to maintain the house in Ohio costs 130 a year, minimum, $130,000 a year, right? And I keep walking, and I literally, I, I shit you not, I stopped. I'm like, dude, you're one of the people in this complex. You, you own one of the nicest houses in this complex. It just hit me. It's, this may sound weird, but sometimes we forget that we're all on a journey. I'm no different than anybody else. I'm a hillbilly kid from Ohio that just figured out how to make money. And I love making money. I love building businesses. I love driving revenue. I love, you know, taking massive risk. I love it. I, I couldn't imagine, truthfully, I couldn't imagine life without it. And I start thinking and, you know, across the street, I have a, guy, a pretty prominent lawyer. Very, very. He's a business owner lawyer, though. There's a difference. He owns. He has thousands of lawyers under him. Multiple states. Then across the street, another guy owns a massive company that does billing for Medicare and Medicaid and all that stuff. And then next to me, you know, I start, you start thinking about the, these are business owners. Now, I'm not saying some employees don't live here because there's several. But most people that's in this complex are definitely risk takers, i.e. business owners. And I'm not saying you have to be a business owner to live an amazing life. That's the path I've chosen. That's the path I will live until eternity, until I die. And ideally, if I do it right, it will live beyond me. You see... I have hundreds of people that rely on me every day, hundreds of employees, vendors, staff, like hundreds of people. That's not for everybody. It's a, it could be in your, like, if you're going after it and you're not, you, you don't want that, it might become a massive burden. It could cause massive internal destruction. Again, you're trying to be someone you don't want to be. And I would hate for you whatever age you're at today, to be living in someone else's shoes or trying to, if you will, because you're never going to be satisfied. You'll never be happy because you're always chasing the next thing they got, not what you have or what you want. One thing I've realized about myself over the years and, and through coaching and mentoring that I, I do for others and others do for me is that I've become very crystal clear on who I am. And I'm very clear on it. I have no ego attached to it. I know what I'm great at. I know what I absolutely suck ass at. And I don't act like I know how to do everything anymore. When I didn't have that much money, I acted like I knew everything. I was a big shot. I was a massive king of the dipshits. I wanted yes people around me everywhere because I was the boss. That's so stupid. But again, just to be clear though, I was mimicking how I thought success looked through other people that I meant on my journey. See, back then I didn't have social media where I could look outwardly. I didn't have audiobooks. I was reading leadership books and I was doing all this cool stuff, but I never understood. Like, I, I just thought you wanted to be the boss. You know, you always see these TV shows where the boss is the man. He's, he's the, you know, he lays down the law. He, he does crazy stuff. He, you know, he he tells people off and disrespects himself and others. Like that's kind of what I was doing. Not kind of, I was doing that. It's stupid. When I sit down and really started getting an authentic with myself, see, everyone talks about authenticity. Well, you can't share outwardly authenticity until you actually know what the fuck you stand for and who you are. And when you do that, authenticity is not a process. It's, it's just who you are. I say stupid shit all the time. I am silly. I'm quirky. I'm funny. I'm, go I'm goofy. My kids laugh at my stupid jokes. That's fun to me. I like to make people laugh, but I also love to tell people to my demise. Oftentimes, like I genuinely, I invest a lot of money in this podcast show. I hire people to help edit it. I hire people to help put it together. I hire people to help deploy it. We email it. I mean, it costs six figures a year to do a podcast show for free. And I'm not saying, oh, thank you, Mark. It's not about that. I'm just sharing 
I do this because I love to and I want to and I get to. I don't have to. I get to do this. See, the old Mark would have never done something like this because it cost money. And I would ask, what's my return on investment? I was talking with a guy yesterday. He's like, dude, what's your KPIs for social media? I said, help people. <laughs> like that's, that's my KPI. See, the thing is, as a business owner, you get stuff twisted. You try to businessize everything. Well, what's your KPIs going to bed? What's your, like, everyone's so focused on certain data that's not quantifiable. My impact by doing this podcast show might not show up for 20 years. And I'm cool with that. But if I was doing this directly to make money and only make money, which I'm not, I'd have a way different strategic plan. My message would be geared to sell the shit out of you 24-7. My agenda would be misaligned with your objective. You're coming here to learn and expand and grow. I'm coming here to get in your fucking pocket and take your cash. That's a misalignment. There's a lot of shows out there that that's their agenda. That's their goal. They're sitting around a table right now saying, podcast show number, blah, 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 blah. How much are we going to make? How many eyeballs and ears do we get? And let's extract money. Let's go. Offer. X. Boom. Done. And you're sitting there learning, thinking you're learning how to make your life better. But what you're doing is learning how to line their pockets. Now, listen, I'm not knocking the models. That's a model. My model, my agenda here is simply to serve. To sit across the desk from you or sit across the cigar lounge and hang out and smoke a cigar with you to connect with you at a deeper level. I wish I could meet 8 billion people one-on-one. -on -one. Unfortunately, it's just not the case, but it's a pretty cool goal. I want to make an impact in people's lives. Everyone I touch from the assistant to the you know, house cleaner to the lawn care guy, like my, my pond guy here, we have ponds on the property. He literally went above and beyond. His name's Lou. Great guy. I didn't even say anything. I was like, dude, like, you know, I have a party on Sunday, Father's Day. It's my birthday. We have some people here. I love shit to be nice. I love shit to be working. And he looked at me, said, done. He showed up Saturday. He was here all day. Keep in mind, he was here all day Friday. He, he put this in his schedule when he didn't even have time. He made time. I think about that because the old Mark, the guy who said, F you, you know, whatever. But dude, I pay people fast. I respect people and I want to help people. I want to see people succeed. You succeeding does not take away from me. The truth is you succeeding. Well, actually, we could do more together. If there's one metric that I would love to measure, I don't know how to do it yet. And if you know how, <clears throat> please let me know. I'd love to know how. I want to know how many people globally we employ as a unit, as a DM, making of a DM family. How many people do we employ? That's a metric I think about often. I want to employ tens of thousands of people because I believe if we can accomplish that, when we accomplish that, I believe I can change their lives. I believe I can change their trajectory, their financial legacy. You got to remember, not everybody wants to be a millionaire, multimillionaire. They understand it's a different cadence, but they want to be respected. They want to be rewarded and they want to be recognized on a consistent basis for the efforts they put in. Now, listen, if you're a lazy piece of shit, I don't want you in my environment at all, ever. But those people will get weeded out through the process. But I've realized what I'm great at. I'm still learning, by the way. I'm still editing this. This is something that has to have constant focus on. Because as we get bigger in the game, I, I just turned 44 on June 19th. It's absolutely insane. But I want you to get very crystal clear. You got, and, and, and let me back, go back for a second. I have two young children, almost seven and three. And my wife, I love my family. Not all business owners want to be with their family. They're traveling around the world to get away from their family, sleeping with 20 different people or what? I, like, again, not judging it. It's just my agenda is to be at home every day, which I am. I'm out in the treehouse about a thousand yards from the house. I took my son's little 125cc Jeep. I drove it here. 
It takes about a minute. <laughs> and I'm a family guy first. I want to be known as a great dad, a great husband, and a great leader in that order. See, I don't believe, like, if, how can you be a great leader at a job or in a company and not be a great family man? I think you're failing at a massive level. Massive. You know, I watched that Steve Jobs movie and I thought about, I'm like, dude, like I would not trade my life. I wouldn't trade one ounce of my life for anything he has. I think he's a smart guy. But he had no personal life. He disowned his children. I don't understand how people coming off of Father's Day, I think about how could you be a father and not want to be with your children? It's like one of the most amazing gifts ever ever is to be a father. Maybe he had a bad childhood. Have you ever asked yourself, if I had a bad childhood and I'm now a father, how can I, like, dude, what changes? If you're a bad father, they're going to have a bad childhood. It continues and continues and continues. You're aware. If you're listening to this show right now and you're a bad person, a bad parent, you're fucking aware. And you got to do something about it. Because if you don't, break the cycle, who's going to break the cycle? Who? The answer is simple. It's you. You're woke. You realize that you've messed up. It's okay. We've all messed up. We all have a story. We all have stories going on. We all have a past, but it's not about the past. It's about today and moving forward. Move your ego to the side. I did a dad podcast show yesterday. And it was Father's Day, like I said, the day before. And my son, my wife got, got this little book, 50 Things About My Dad or something like that. And my son has to fill in the blank. I can't read it here because I'll start crying. But like I was in the sauna, finishing up the night at 10 o'clock at night on Father's Day. Kids are sleeping. Everyone's sleeping, actually. And I'm reading this book. And I begin to cry a lot. For 15 minutes, I cried. Keep in mind, a lot going on. I just turned 44. It's Father's Day. And I just got this cool book by my son. My daughter's not old enough to kind of write this stuff. But I had a thought. And that's why I kept crying. And I'll try to share it with you, but <laughs> it's hard. Because there's so much to do in the day. And everyone, I, what pisses me off and what gets me excited at the same time is I can see people that have it in them, but they're walking around like they're going to live forever. We're not going to live forever. So why do we act like that? Why do we, why is our move so small? Why are we so afraid to say something that might get, you know, made fun of or whatever as adults? This is what I wrote down immediately. I said, I don't want to die. I have so much I want to give the world. I haven't even scratched the surface on June 19, 2022. I love my family so much. And without that, I want to lead by example and live life to the fullest. I want to walk my son. I want to go to my son's wedding. I want to walk my daughter down the aisle, and that's not promised. This could be my last podcast show I ever record. I might not wake up. I use death as motivation. I did an entire show about it. This shit's deep because it's real. See, I've helped a lot of people accomplish some pretty cool shit. Truth is, we're just getting started. But why people invest $50,000 a year to be in the DM family is not surface level basic bullshit. It's to connect and deepen and grow. If we can grow an individual, you can grow anything else that you're working on. Business is easy. Business is math. FYI, it's a formula. Just like cooking spaghetti is a formula. Baking the cake is a formula. Building a business is a formula. But there's no manual on being a great dad a great husband, how to raise kids, like all this shit. There's no real manuals. Yes, there's some instruction. There's some stuff that you can learn. But what they fail to mention is there's past to all this stuff. We all have a past. And we're all interpreting data 
at different frequencies, different levels. We understand, we're, we're, we take it in, but we're distributing it differently. I was asked on this dad podcast show because my dad works really hard. My mom and dad both have their whole life. And he said, does your dad work smart? And I said, well, it depends if you're asking me or him, because I believe my dad's worked very smart compared to where he's come from. My dad had, you know, he worked hard every day, but his father worked five jobs to raise nine kids. He worked hard. So my dad, next layer, worked very smart in consideration of that. Where I'm at today in my life, I would consider I've worked extra smarter, not because I'm smarter, because I saw the struggle my dad gave. And we have technology. We have big, I had a bigger vision than my dad. That's not a knock on my dad. My dad had his vision. We all have a vision. We all have that. And I'm not comparing it, but you have to understand where you're coming from to understand the question. And more importantly, ex, you know, understand the answer. You're sitting here wondering, like for me to make millions of dollars a year, it's fairly easy. I understand how to do it now. It wasn't always easy, but now it's ultra easy. Why? Well, I have a lot of relationships. I have a lot of knowledge. I have 26 years, 26 years. As I'm talking to you today, exactly 26 years I've been in business, 26 fucking years. To say I've been through a lot is an understatement, but I'm still standing. I'm still here. That says something in itself. Anybody that's been in business for 26 years understands the grit, the determination, the goals. Not to say, And again, this was not, it's still not always easy. The bigger you get, the bigger, the bigger problems. That's it. <laughs> but where I'm going with this is what do you want? You, I would hate to see you comparing your life to other people your entire life and never enjoy the fruits of your labor, the fruits of your effort, the late nights, the early mornings, the throat punches, the nuts, kicks in the nuts, hitting the head back by, by a two by four in the back of the head when you're not, when you're least expecting it and so on, because you're like, man, I don't have what I want. I'm going for, see. I'm not trying to be a corporate raider. I'm not trying to be a corporate billionaire. I'm a lifestyle entrepreneur that will be worth billions of dollars in the future. My timeline's different than the average person. I'm in it forever. Some people are trying to get billions in five years. Cool. I'm not saying I wouldn't like to get there in five years, but there's trade-offs to the journey. There's nothing. There's no business opportunity. There's nothing in my life that you could put in front of me that would have me take away from my children and my wife. Nothing. If it's not aligned with those pieces initially, I don't even look at it. Because my priorities are direct and very clear to myself first and foremost, as well as to other people that communicate with me. You can't, Mark, come to Nicaragua. We're going to dig this well. We're going to make billions of dollars. Cool. I'm not. Good luck. Like. It's not about the money. It's not about any of that. Like, I want to make impact. I want to help other people succeed. I can do that from the comfort of my treehouse. While my kids play, I can do it from the pool. I can do it from my basement cigar bar. I can do it from hanging out here at the bocce court. <laughs> I, I Like, I've built my life for what I want. I don't give a fuck if you want that or not. I really don't. I don't care if you think it's cool or not cool. You know what's really crazy about what I'm talking about? When I say this shit, people actually like it more because they realize it's true. I'm not trying to be someone for you. I'm trying to be me. The better version of me. And my authenticity is you is ultimately it's very real. And that's attractive. I don't like fake people. I don't have time to be fake. If it quacks like a duck, it's a fucking duck, period. But we need to get focused on you. What do you want to be? I talked, I did a show about this, about one, being a number two. You understand there's many people that's become billionaires and many, many millionaires, multimillionaires, hundred millionaires 
that were number twos, number threes, number fives, number 20. Like, I think Microsoft created over 12,000 multimillionaires. Think about that. A company created over 12,000 multimillionaires. Balmer was a multi-billionaire, number two guy. Steve Jobs had a number two guy worth billions of dollars. Wozniak, right? Think about that. Like, there's a lot of opportunity being number two, but some people... Like you're trying to, you know, create all these cool videos and all this content because you think that's what you want, but you know, you don't want it, but you keep doing it. I'm not saying not to do stuff you're uncomfortable with, but like do the stuff you're uncomfortable with to make you the better person in the future. Don't do it for someone else. Do it for you. I do know not everyone's cut out for what I do. I've realized that over the years, what is easy to me is very stressful to others. It's easy for me to make fast multi-million dollar decisions fast, nanosecond fast. If I have the data, I make a move. The average person can't do that. That's the truth. They haven't worked their way, that muscle to get to that point. Hiring, firing. Ugh. These are things I hate doing. I hate firing, but that's part of the journey. It's part of the, it's what I got to do. It is not pleasant. It's actually very sad. If you can't handle these emotions, you're going to have a rough time. And I'm not saying go self-medicate with alcohol or drugs either, right? I probably did some of that back in the day, mostly with alcohol, where I would over drink because I'm like, dude, I just got to do it. I'm scared. I don't know what to do and get caught up in the middle and wait six months before I actually did what I had to do. I learned from that. That does not happen anymore. If there's a problem. We execute it and move on. You must. Once you understand your greater purpose, things get a little bit simpler. You have a clear vision, very crystal clear focus. It's funny. I used to be, try to tell, like when people would ask me what I did, oh, I'm a blah, 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 blah. Like I try to prop up. Now it's like, dude, I'm just trying to build companies one day at a time. I'm not trying to be a big dog. I'm trying to be me. I'm excited to help people. I want to, sometimes you got to share what you're doing. It sounds weird when I do podcast shows because you're thinking all this guy does is talk about himself. No, dude. I only do that here to share authenticity with you, inner conversations with myself, real shit. As I sit here, I think about the people that we can touch, not just you, but through you. If I can help you become a better person, a better leader, a better doer, Everything in your life gets better. You become a better father, better wife, better spouse. I want everyone to be better at everything they do. I really do. It's exciting for me to see, you know, as I'm, because we're coming, keep in mind too, we're coming up to the event June 29th and 30th here in Cleveland. And uh, if there's any ticket sales left, you can go see it at markevansdm.com forward slash Cleveland. But um, we'll have three, over 300, 400 people there from all over the country, all over the world, actually. And these are all business entrepreneur people that want to grow and expand. They're all paying $1,000 each to be there. It'll change people's lives. I'm very conscious of that. It changes my life. How? Well, it's already changed my life. Because I, I, I was questioning if I could put at least 300 people in a room. I've never done it. I've done 200 and something, but I've never done 300. It was a stretch goal. We did it. And we're going to add more than that. Changed my life. Showed me what's possible. What my reach is like. And listen, folks, if you think selling 300 tickets is easy, I, 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 I challenge you to do it. And if you can do it, that's awesome. It's not easy. I'm not in the seminar business. My team is not equipped to do seminars. That's not what we do. We're business builders. Doing seminars is a whole nother animal. Whole nother animal. It's a lot of moving parts. A lot of coordination. Plus, we finish off with a badass James Bond party on the, for the 30th for my birthday bash party where 100% of nut proceeds go to charity. My goal is to raise at least $150,000 to charity. Last time we did 151. This year, I think we could hit way more. But times are different. So as my life changes, when I see what we're capable of, not only that, 
As a leader, I see my team growing with me. I'm pushing them. They're pushing me. The vision's very crystal clear. We're here to help people. So if you're getting emails and texts from us, it's not because we are spamming you. It's because we're fucking paying attention and you're not showing up. And we care about that because we know when you show up, you will change your life. It's a game changer. I've been to over 250 events in my life, me personally. Over 250 events. I used to go weekly in the beginning. Weekly. Meet 10 people, 20 people, 50 people, 2 people, whatever. I'm showing the fuck up. Zoom's cool and all, but it's only Zoom. Oh, I have so-and-so. Dude, until you meet someone face-to-face, break bread with them, connect with them, have a beer with them, get up to the bar, talk real-life shit, everything's very transactional and surface level. I love the relationship piece of the game. It's not easy. I send lots of gifts out every day. We send lots of, you know, we're we're talking to people every day. I want you to know I'm not just over here sitting, hanging out in the treehouse doing dick. I'm hanging out in the treehouse, working on a big picture vision, communicating with my teams, organizations, leading, connecting, collaborating, and expanding. So I want you to find out what do you want? Discover that. It will set you free. I want you to execute relentlessly every single day. See, I I listened to that book by David Goggins, which is awesome. His message is powerful. It's It's undeniable. But I have zero fucking desire to be David Goggins. Zilch. I wouldn't trade a fucking fingernail to have his life. Yeah, maybe he's a badass. Cool. I Like, what does that mean? See, I don't have the comparison syndrome. I was always told if, you're, if you want one thing from the person, you bet, if, if you're not willing to trade 100% for 100%, stop thinking about it. That guy's been through some real shit. My question is, always is when I listen to this, because I'm a little bit more mature now than I was, I ask myself, and again, this is not a knock against anybody. You should think about this about me as well. But when I listen to David Goggins, is he running from something or running towards something? I don't know the answer. I've never even heard him talk about it. But based off of what I hear, because I know people have demons, he's running every day from something. Every day. I don't know if that's good or bad. But I'm not running from something. I'm running towards something. Yes, I don't have abs like him. Yes, I can't fucking run until my ball sack falls off. I can't do all that shit. I don't want to. I have zero desire to. Well, Mark, you don't like pain, man. Man, you're not dedicated. Cool. If that's what you think, that's cool. But what I've realized, like I said earlier, we all have a different path. I'm not trying to live someone else's path. I'm fucking forging my own path. I'm in the woods as we speak, and there's a lot of brush everywhere. I got the fucking machete, and I'm chopping shit down to forge my own path. I could take other paths. It might be easier sometimes, but it's not my path. I want to forge my own fucking path. I want to see what I'm capable of. I don't give a fuck what you do, Goggins does, Priscilla does, Waylon does. They inspire me. I hope I inspire them. I hope I inspire you. You inspire me. But I want to I, I want to work. I want to fucking chop shit down and forge and drive. Lead the way. Show people there's a better life. My family's watching. My team's watching. I'm watching. And when you do this, I truly believe and I I'm, I'm very like I'm sitting here and an amazing time in my life. I don't need or want anything, but I do, I guess I do want, I want more life. I want more impact, but I don't need anything. I'm working on my health at a whole nother level. I'm working on businesses at a whole, like a whole not, if you only knew what's going on and I'll be sharing as what's going on, but we have some real shit going on. Life-changing growth. 
It's not all showed up yet, but it will. It's just a matter of time. I do know a lot of my team members listen to these shows, and I want you to know I'm at the I'm at the wheel. I'm at the helm, and I am fucking full steam ahead. Not everything's rainbow and unicorns, but we are in this bitch together, and we will fucking prevail. We will win. We will win. June 29th and June 30th, Cleveland, Ohio. If you're not there, that sucks. But Mark, I'll go to the next one. That's the problem. It's always the next one. I'll get to it tomorrow. I'll, I'll try to next time. What if there's not a next time for me or you? Yes, it might be inconvenient. Fuck it. It's, it's, all, it's, always, it's never convenient. <laughs> it rarely is convenient. Get your ass to Cleveland, Ohio. Meet real people. Every single person in that room is paying to grow. Every single person. I'm there to grow. My speakers I'm bringing in are there to grow. Entrepreneurs at the highest level are sharing their messages to you for free. Nothing to buy. I'm paying for their rooms. I'm paying for, like, come on. This is a no-brain. You're... You're worried about spending a thousand fucking dollars. You're worried about spending 200 a night at a hotel. Oh my God, $500 for a flight. If those are your problems, you need to be there even more than anybody else because you need a reset. Your fucking stinking thinking is crushing your dreams. MarkEvansDM.com forward slash Cleveland. Get a ticket, bring a guest, get dinner with the Dons, step your game up. You're rolling with the right crew if you're there because we're there to help. We're there to drive. We're there to support and grow with you. I'll finish with this. As I'm sitting here, again, I can't read what's in the book my son wrote yet because I'm still emotional about it and I probably will be forever. But something I'm going to have my wife, I told her, we were talking about, I was like, this would be amazing to have the kids do this every year for both of us because you'd see the evolving, the evolution See, we know our kids are watching us, but we, do we know what they're seeing? That's a big difference. They're watching us, but their interpretation of what they see is what I read in the book that Mark gave me. To say I was proud is an understatement. It inspired me even more to know that I'm on the right path. They're watching, but who are they watching? Are you trying to be me? trying to be Goggins, trying to be someone else, or are they watching mom and dad? The mom and dad that they know is capable of so much more. We have a duty. If we're aware, like we are, if you're listening to the show, you're aware that there's another level and we need to get on it. One thing my son said, and I didn't even know he knew what it was. He's like, if my dad was a car, what kind of car would he be? My son said a Dodge Ram. <laughs> Which is funny to me because I will ram my fucking head through a wall to accomplish what I need to accomplish. He's watching. Don't be just a looky-loo and just watching to watch. Watch, execute. I want to see you at the top. It's not lonely at the top, by the way. You just change your friends. You evolve your, your network. It's never lonely at the top because there's someone always way higher than you. It's a lie. People tell you it's lonely at the top or on the bottom. They're lonely. They're miserable. The top is amazing. You see, I, I'm sitting 200 feet up. I see everything. It's not lonely up here. I'm fucking ecstatic. The breeze is cooler. Trees are moving. I see a fox. I see a deer running. Stream is rolling. Doesn't suck. But when you're on the bottom, you only see a small piece of the pie. I might see the stream or a deer. I'm not going to see it all. Like I see it from here. So what point of view, what angle do you want to see life at? I prefer it on the top. How about you? Get to work. It's go time. Thinking about you. Have an amazing day. And with that said, make your day count. Then Mark Evans when he step in the door He's closing deals Time to tell him what the DM stand for I'm a deal maker, a deal maker But I'm not just a deal maker I'm a dream maker The journey's where it's at It's all about the process It's time to get over to the DM project
Yeah. From a small town in Ohio, so I know how it is. And I come from a lot of money. I remember as a kid, wanted to make a honey bread. Didn't see no one making more than that. Graduated high school with a 1.8. Probably should have held me back. I hope my principals and teachers are alive just to witness this. I'm my own boss. I'm out here running two eight figure businesses. I can walk away from it all, and I'll be good. But I've been called to help people just like y'all learn the game. It's time to ball. Everybody chasing the money, but I'm not chasing the money. I'm out here chasing the purpose, yo. I've been working my whole life. What got us where we at? Is it gonna get us where we wanna go? So. It's time to push, time to learn, time to grow. Uh -oh. I'm more Gavin's DM. I'm here to help and teach him what I, what I know and how I did it. To discover freedom. There ain't no question, more Gavin's when he step in the doubt. He's closing deals. It's time to tell him what the DM stand for. I'm a deal maker, a deal maker. But I'm not just a I'm a dream maker The journey's where it's at It's all about the process It's time to get over to the DM project I'm more getting here Deal maker Deal maker Deal maker Deal maker Deal maker Deal maker DM project This is the podcastfactory.com